And welcome back to The Factor on Sensor. The American Cancer Society is out with a new warning. Colorectal cancer is affecting men and women of all ages very young people. This is according to their new study. Researchers predict almost 20,000 people under 50 years old will be diagnosed in 2023. The cancer is dangerous. Plus, we address AFib in the USA and the concerns medical professionals have about that a little bit later. But we start now with the cancer, Dr. Donna Shali. So what is the typical age for colorectal cancer? Yeah, so typical age nowadays, it's actually becoming younger and younger, right? And that's why the American Cancer Society has now issued this statement out. For but I'm sorry, what is the, the typical age that we're used to? Right, so typical age before was anywhere from about 45 to 55 years okay, old, right? It. Now we're seeing this in the younger population and younger as young as 35 years of age. So, um, and that's why the American Cancer society is now talking about it because what's happening Isaiah is that these cancers are becoming more prevalent and they're becoming more aggressive in the younger population and so if you have any risk factors if you have any family history of cancer specifically colon cancers or you're overweight you have other medical conditions uh, or you smoke <coughs> those are all important reasons for you to be tested and uh, evaluated for this and they they also the information you sent me the the, the research you sent me said it was a mystery and they don't understand why it's happening. That's correct, yeah. Um, there are some hypotheses out there. There are some uh, beliefs of why that's happening, but we're not fully sure as to why this is happening. One of the thoughts is more processed food that we're consuming here in the United States. Um, and we do see a higher rate here as well of this, uh, of colon cancer. And we see it in men as well. So there's a more of a chance of having colon cancer in men than in, there is in females. And so what's the testing process? And how would you even know if you're one of those young people who may be susceptible to it? Sure, yeah, so family history is very important, right? Family history as well as medical comorbidities. So if you smoke, you're overweight, you have other medical conditions, those are all very important precursors and important diagnostic kind of information for the medical professionals, number one. Number two, um, there are tests that you can do, right? Especially, this is one of those very treatable cancers out there because if you catch the cancer early enough, you can treat it, you can get it removed, um, and that's why colonoscopies are so such important tools and such resourceful because not only is it diagnostic, meaning you can go in and diagnose it and see if there are actual lesions and polyps there, and number two, you can also treat it. So if there are these precancerous lesions, then you can go in and remove those at the same time. Now, you know there are people like me who never Yes, we know. Cook, never go to the doctor <laughs> yes, until correct. I'm like bleeding out of one of the orifices. And there <laughs> are things for, for people like you, Isaiah. There are things, there are blood tests, there are other stuff out but there. But what can we notice at home sure. in our daily lives that would tell us that we have colorectal cancer? I, and that's the difficult part, right, Isaiah? This thing presents itself as very asymptomatic initially because you don't have any, a lot, uh, any or really lots of symptoms initially until it's it's too late. So if you've got like rectal bleeding or if you've got weight loss, fever, or chills, you may be more at the advanced stage of this. And so that's why it's very important to get a good history and to uh, get worked up earlier on if you have that history. Did or you see my that. eyes? I was like, do I have any of those things? But anyway, let's talk about AFib in the last remaining, remaining moments we have. Sure, yeah. So AFib is one of those that we've been talking about for a while. It, uh, it happens from time to time in folks, right? So it's paroxysmal. What that means means is that it... But uh, first, let's establish what it is for the layman who yeah, may not know so, what AFib is. Right, so atrial fibrillation is an abnormal rhythm of your heart mm -hmm. that the heart is supposed to contract and it's supposed to get the blood out to different areas and AFib is when it does not do that and it just kind of fibs itself, it kind of just shakes without getting all, pumping all of that blood out, right? That predisposes you to heart attacks, mm -hmm. to, uh, to strokes and those sorts of things and that's why it's so important to talk about about that and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about is smart watches right some of these smart watches are great helpful tools in our toolbox to tell us because when you go to a doctor you may be just getting an EKG which is just a 12 second glimpse of what your heart's doing at that particular moment therefore if there's other things that we can do to help us in this fight 
that's what's very important and that's what we're talking about. All right, Dr. Donna Charlie, always good to see you with bad news. And my, everything you talk about is like it's me. I, I am dying right now in the factory. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. We appreciate your time, sir.